Hi there and welcome to our next lesson in our flipped class C5, how much quantitative chemistry and in this lesson we're going to be looking at uh, equilibria which is forwards and backwards reactions. Okay so our objectives for this lesson is by the end of this lesson on reversible reactions which is equilibrium or equilibria uh, you should know and understand what an equilibrium is and factors that can affect the size and the position of an equilibrium now we have come across equilibrium before when we looked at the production of ammonia now as we said in the title of the lesson an equilibrium is a reversible reaction so here nitrogen and hydrogen will react to form ammonia but at the same time ammonia will react to form or break down to form the nitrogen and hydrogen so this symbol here is our symbol to show that we have an equilibrium reaction now as we've also um, talked about when we did the production of ammonia we need to make sure we've got the right uh, conditions to make it now this means that we need to have the the right temperature the right pressure in order to to get the uh, or the most yield of ammonia and what we found is if we increase pressure it will favor the production of ammonia whereas if we increase temperature it will favour the breakdown of ammonia and the production of hydrogen and nitrogen but we do actually if you remember correctly we do actually increase the temperature in order to increase the rate of this forwards reaction now when you have an equilibrium such as the one we've got here where we have a plus b reacting to form c plus d and then c plus d reacting to form a plus B we have an equilibrium now it means that the amount of A plus B forming C plus D is the same as the amount of C plus D is reacting to form A plus B so it's every time one of these breaks down to, or reacts to form these one of these will react to form one of these now we're going to have a quick look at a real life example here and this is where we've got a bottle of sparkling water now what we're going to focus on is this area here now you can see where we have the line where the water ends and then the gas meets now if we draw that line here what we've got above the line is we've got carbon dioxide gas now the carbon dioxide gas is here at the top and it causes the the bottle to be under under pressure now the carbon dioxide gas can dissolve into the water to form carbonic acid and that's what makes the water fizzy in here and the carbonic acid can then break down to form carbon dioxide above the water level and that's where we get our equilibrium so every time a carbon dioxide dissolves into the water a carbonic acid particle breaks down to put carbon dioxide back into the into the gas above now in terms of our position of our equilibrium we can talk about the position in two different ways now if we take this example back here now if we have A plus B but the concentration of A and B is a lot lower than the concentration of C plus D so we've got 
here. Yeah. More A and B, oh sorry, less A and B are there than C and D. Then what we have is this sort of reaction, but we need to remember that for every A and B that's breaking down or reacting to form C and D, C and D is reacting to form A and B, but we've just got more C and D. Now this means that the equilibrium is said to be positioned to the right. So the concentration of the products is greater than the concentration of the reactants. Now, if we take the same one again, but this time we've got more reactants than we do products, then the equilibrium is said to be positioned to the left. In order to reach an equilibrium, you must have it in a situation where the chemicals cannot escape. This is known as a closed system. Now, in order to find a equilibrium, we need to make sure that it's in a closed system, but we do need to also just remember that the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the backwards reaction. Now, the position of the equilibrium can be changed to, to suit what you are looking for. Now there are several factors that you can use to change that rate of equation and these include the temperature, the pressure and the concentration of the chemicals. Now we're going to have a look at an example of how it's used in industry. Now the chemical dinitrogen tetraoxide, which is N2O4, is used as a rocket fuel and it's produced by the reaction of two lots of nitrogen dioxide. So this is in an equilibrium. Now, both of these are gases. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how the equilibrium is affected by temperature. So, if we write the balanced equation, so we've got two lots of NO2 gas makes... N2O4 gas and that is balanced. Now we have two types of reaction here. Now the forward reaction here is exothermic which means it produces heat. Now that heat is used to power the backwards reaction which is endothermic. Now whenever we take the heat from a reaction, so from the positive reaction, it will drive the backwards reaction forward. Now this means that when we have a increase of temperature, it will cause the reaction to favour the backwards reaction. So we can say increasing the temperature will move the equilibrium to the left, meaning that we will have more nitrogen dioxide. Now obviously we want to produce the uh, dinitrogen tetraoxide so we want to have the uh, exothermic reaction favoured so we want to move it to the right. So if we want to favour the exothermic reaction, this one, then we will have to lower the temperature. Now if we have a look at the pressure now we've got two lots of NO2 gas and we have one mole of the 
N04, sorry, N204. Now, when we increase the pressure, it will favour the side with the least number of moles of gas. Now, on this side, because we've got two lots of NO2, we have two moles of gas. And on this side, we only have one mole of gas. So by increasing the pressure, we compress the two moles here together, and that will favour the forward reaction so it can move the equilibrium towards the right. So increasing the pressure means that it will favour the side with the fewer moles of gas. Now for the last factor is concentration. So again we'll write the equation out of NO2 gas and we've got two mm. lots of that making one lot of N2O4 gas. Now, in terms of changing the concentration, we can do it one of four ways. We can increase and decrease the reactants, or we can increase or decrease the products. Now, if we were to increase the reactants, it would favour the equilibrium moving to the right. So by adding in more NO2, it will push the equilibrium to produce more N2O4. Now at the same time, if we were to decrease the amount of product, we could also move the equilibrium to the right. So, to summarise, by increasing the reactants and decreasing the products, we can move the equilibrium to the right. Now, in reverse of that, if we were to increase the product, so put more N2O4 in, and reduce the amount of reactant we would move the equilibrium to the left so obviously when we do this reaction in industry the desired product here is the uh, dinitrogen tetraoxide so we increase the amount of nitrogen dioxide and we decrease this amount so we will end up producing more of this Now, all of these ways to change our equilibrium, so changing the temperature, changing the pressure, changing the concentration, are all examples of Le Chatelet's principle. Now, he says, again, as you increase the temperature, you favour the endothermic reaction. If you decrease the temperature, you favour the exothermic increasing the pressure you will favor the side of the reaction with the fewer molecules or moles and changing the concentration increasing the reactants and decreasing the products will favor the forward reaction and decreasing the uh, products and increasing the reactants will favor the backwards reaction okay so we've had quite a complex route lesson today where we've been looking at equilibrium and what we need to remember is that equilibrium isn't about the concentration it's about the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the backwards reaction being the same so that's what the equi bit means uh, we've looked at how we can position it to the right meaning that we favor more products being made or we can favor it to the left meaning that we have more uh, reactants available. We've also looked at how we can manipulate the equilibrium through Le Chatelet's principle uh, and that's where we can move the equilibrium to the right or to the left how we, when we change the conditions of that closed system. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye.